keep on going. Hello and, and welcome everybody to this latest um, Active Learning Special Interscript webinar series um, from, from Malt. And I'm delighted that Deborah Arnold's here today to, to share her, uh, her her toolkit, uh, which is it's a fantastic resource. Um, just as we go through um, these few slides to get us started, if anybody's interested in getting involved with our group, please um, sign up with us, um, join our I'll give details in a second of where you can join up and, and join the group. Um, events, there's currently this week going on, Telfest, uh, which is a fantastic um, free uh, event for people to join. If you, you've still got two days to, to sign up and, and join on things, there's other things. There's obviously the Deborah's presentation today, and then the Active Learning Network have a global festival of learning coming up in April. So if anybody's interested or wants to submit a proposal, there's a, the link and all there for that. Um, yeah, so if you want, I'll post this in the chat later. Um, if you want to get involved with us and join the group, uh, I'll post that in the chat, so please do. And we have other resources and, and things on our website. You can meet the community, there's our blog, and you can see past recordings of our webinar series. So at this point, I'm, I'm going to pass over to Deborah, um, who's going to talk us through the ELM for Life Dynamic Toolkit. Um, so without listening too much more to me, I'm going to pass over to Deborah. Okay, thank you very much, Richard, um, and welcome to everybody. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your lunch breaks to uh, um, to, to join this session. Um, I'm actually joining from France, so one hour ahead. I was able to have my lunch at a normal time, um, but as you can tell from my accent, I am of uh, British origin. I just left the country about three, 30 years ago. Um, so I work as a national and international projects coordinator for ONEJ, which is um, a member association uh, called a digital university uh, for management and economics. Now, we're not a university per se because France doesn't have um, anything like the open university, but we support our members um, in um, pedagogical innovation, creating open educational resources. Um, and we also have a mandate from the French Ministry of Education to represent all the French digital universities uh, from the different disciplinary fields um, in international projects. And this is where uh, the Ellen for Life project comes in. So I'm just going to give you a bit of background because um, Richard said that uh, this was my um, toolkit. Um, I prefer to use the collective our toolkit from um, the uh, from the, the project Ellen for Life which developed this. So let's get this right from um, before. Where are we? Here we go. Oh no, I don't want to do that. I want to do that for the screen share. And um, so this is from the uh, LN for Life uh, uh, website. Uh, we can share the links in the chat later. Um, so you'll be able to just see here the different partners that were involved. So from Onej, uh, we were the coordinators of this project, which finished uh, last year. Um, so it was an Erasmus Plus project. And I know perhaps some of you are um, uh, sad that um, uh, UK organizations can no longer participate in Erasmus Plus um, uh, for the reasons that we that we know. Um, in this project, we had the, uh, the University of Dundee, um, and I'd particularly like to highlight um, uh, their contribution, uh, in, in particular, um, Helen Booth, who is a learning technologist at uh, University of Dundee and who is herself an ALT member. Um, because the uh, the toolkit that I'm going to show you, uh, Helen uh, was very much uh, involved in um, in creating that uh, alongside also um, uh, Magdalena Jasinska from the Warsaw University of Technology, uh, who was in charge of the overall design. Uh, so it really is a collective effort and. Uh, um, uh, other things that I'm going to show you have also come from uh, this, uh, this uh, wonderful partnership. And we go back a long way. Um, if you end up on this page on the, on the site, 
uh, you'll see that we go back to 2003, so nearly 20 years history of collaboration. Uh, this was our sixth project. Um, we're taking a little bit of a break right now, uh, but uh, looking forward to uh, continuing the collaborations and also to seeing um, the uh, dynamic toolkit being used. Richard shared that um, uh, he knows of students who reference it, use it, um, and uh, we're hearing feedback all the time from uh, from teachers who find it useful. So I hope you will too. Um, so you're probably very curious to see what the toolkit looks like. Um, so I'm jumping in here with uh, a live demo. Um, it is designed to be extremely uh, simple to use, so it shouldn't fail on me. Um, and uh, just to go through some of the, the principles behind this, um, what we had from a previous project was a framework of soft skills where we had digital skills. Here we call them, uh, here we consider them digital soft skills. So they're not the technical digital skills. They're all about communicating through di with digital technology, um, methodological skills, things like learning to learn, analytical skills, um, personal skills. Um, and then social skills, so everything to do with collaboration, negotiation, and so on. So this was a framework developed and validated through a series of focus groups in a previous project, and that we now use to classify the different methods in the dynamic toolkit. Uh, we also classified them by methods um, or by mo modalities. Um, we know now that these modalities um, are less clearly distinguished, um, especially with all the um, practices that uh, came uh, to light during, during the pandemic. But at the time when we designed this, we did separate blended face-to-face -face and online. Um, and we also had outdoor activities as well, which is, uh, which is very nice for active learning. Um, we also found that teachers were very, very interested in um, knowing um, which particular activities uh, could be done in a, in a very short time slot, um, which uh, were more um, for a long duration through a month for a semester. Some of these you actually need to build on them uh, progressively in different sessions. And then group size was an important factor. And um, as many of us know, it's very challenging to do active learning in large group sizes. So the idea here was to enable um, filtering of these. Um, what we have uh, in the complete list are 30 selected methods. All of these were um, uh, identified through desk search, were tried and tested uh, with pilot teachers and also um, integrated other outputs from the LN project, which uh, I'll show you at the end. But if we just come back to the filter, uh, I'll just do a very quick filter on social skills. Obviously, the more we filter, the less choices we have. But if we filter the, um, uh, the social skills, and the example that I want to show you here is, uh, is brainstorming, because this technique is perhaps one of the the richest, the, the, the most richly documented um, in, the, in the dynamic toolkit. Um, so we have a short description. Uh, we have a case study, which is a, a video, which is also a standalone video on YouTube. And it's also integrated into the LN for Life MOOC, uh, which I'll mention again at the end. Um, we have a list of the different tools that uh, uh, can be used. There's a pedagogical scenario uh, to help teachers actually implement this. There is um, information here, quite simple information about assessment. Um, here, we're not really considered with assessing this particular method. And um, uh, additional resources, either scientific articles, and then connection with other methods in the toolkit. So that's the main body of the, um, uh, of the entry in the dynamic toolkit. On the right, we see, um, let me move up to the stop. Sorry if I'm making people dizzy with the, with the scrolling. Um, uh, the whole sheet is downloadable as a PDF, so you can take it away, look at it um, offline, uh, make notes on it. Um, 
there are examples of uh, actual practice from um, uh, teachers who have uh, who have used it. And again, this was where we enriched the dynamic toolkit in the second half of the project. After we'd produced all the content for the for the MOOC, we decided to re-inject some of this into, into the methods. So it was a really circular process of describing the methods, testing them in the pilot projects, using the results of the pilot projects to create the MOOC, using the results of the MOOC to enrich the dynamic toolkit. So we can, for example, see here um, uh, the, the play card as um, a, an infographic, which summarizes the process to go through the definition of the, the topic and so on. OK, and I'm sorry to see messages in that uh, it's not working. OK, so coming back to um, the dynamic toolkit, we also have um, uh, the description of which soft skills from the framework uh, this method mobilizes and helps students to develop, uh, the appropriate modalities that can be used, um, although I think inventive teachers could now do brainstorming completely online. Uh, I'm sure that's possible and I'm sure there are examples of, of this. Um, Group size here, it's been classified as individual, but with notes, no particular cost involved. For some of the other methods where you need to use particular tools, um, we mentioned the costs, although we were very careful uh, about associating these different methods and techniques with um, free open access tools. And then the different categories that, um, that the method is appropriate for. And so that's really what we have uh, times 30 for all the different methods. Now, I'm just looking at the time, 12 minutes past, uh, uh, past one for you in the, in the UK and, and Ireland. Um, we could have a, a quick run through from, uh, from the, the participants. If you want to put in the chat um, a particular method that you're interested in or um, particular types of activities that you want to look at we can see what else is in the um, is in the dynamic toolkit so I'll go back to the home page does anybody want to suggest uh, filters or um, particular methods the outdoor mode okay let's see what is classified under the outdoor mode. <laughs> this is a, is this a leap in the dark for me? <laughs> what do we have? Okay, uh, we have real world missions. Um, this was because this was also a um, uh, a transnational project with people from uh, different. Uh, um, uh, languages. We had a lot of discussion about what we meant by outdoor, um, and I and I think um, uh, in native English speakers would think that um, uh, outdoor is learning outdoors in nature. Uh, but for the majority of the partners, outdoors meant outside the institution. So this is why we have things like real world mission within companies. And it's interesting that I never managed to convince the rest of the pit that outdoors was really outdoors um, in, uh, in nature. Um, so this is why we have um, these examples here. Um, so we have the, we have the real world um, missions within companies. Let me go back. Uh, we have experiential learning. Okay, which is also linked to um, to the to the mission. We have problem-based learning, and we have uh, participation of higher education students in associations. So these are more external to um, 
uh, to what goes on within the uh, within the universities and other higher education institutions. So sorry to disappoint you that we didn't have nature-based activities, but if anybody does have nature-based activities to contribute, this would help make the um, the dynamic toolkit even more dynamic by bringing in um, new activities. Um, does anybody have examples of um, uh, active learning techniques and methods that aren't included in the in the dynamic toolkit, such as these things that we could explore to to enrich and, and bring in um, further. I don't know if participants can also speak if they wish. I suppose uh, voices are activated for those who can. Um, I want uh, this is not just a one way presentation. I'd also like to have a um, uh, a discussion and question and answer here. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> a challenge. I like the idea of it still being called outdoor. So, Valinda, that that means that um, our definition of outdoor is acceptable to you. Uh, or that we should uh, refine it and really restrict outdoor to outdoors activities in the sense of uh, outside in the wider world. We're just to add my tuppence worth in there. I, I yeah. originally thought it was outdoor as an outside of the, the institution outdoors. <laughs> so I, I, I found it confusing. Um, Mm -hmm. so we'll go through. So, I think clarification around that might help for those who are native English speakers. Um, but in saying that, any of the activities that are in there, you could do outside, really, if you thought about it. <laughs> um, yeah, you can do brainstorming yeah, outside. Yeah, it's, you can it do. Just depends on yeah. the weather, and <laughs> over yeah. here, the weather's not usually great. Yeah, um, I'm going to see about about tweaking that term so that it relates more closely to to those four methods that are collected under outdoor. Yeah. But I find it, it's very useful that when you go through this to give you ideas. For me, it's all about triggering ideas, this toolkit. Mm -hmm. And it gets you started if you're a bit stuck or you want to try something new and you don't know where to go. So I, I, I do find it is, is, is a fantastic resource. And I share it with, with our staff to get them up and running, um, to think about mm -hmm. active learning. Okay, that's thanks, Richard. I mean, that was exactly the intention. Um, I mean, we give scenarios, but they're not prescriptive scenarios. Uh, they're examples of what other teachers have done uh, for inspiration, um, and rather than being, you know, recipes that you that you have to follow. Um, and and I think the the way many of us teach in in higher education uh, um, uh, is, is is really based on that being inspired by. Uh, examples from from our peers because I I also teach myself um, and uh, uh, beyond being the uh, project coordinator here uh, I also teach on a fully online course and uh, I teach project management and so in fact I went back to the dynamic toolkit when I took when I took on this course uh, to see how I could make what was very a very traditional online course when I inherited it, how I could make that uh, more active and, and bring in active learning in a purely online um, uh, setting uh, with an additional challenge of a very, very large cohort of 80 students. Um, so I was combining many of those um, uh, challenges and, and, and constraints um, uh, on, on my own course. And the, the dynamic toolkit did help me, although uh, I still obviously I'm in a process of continuous improvement of that course as well. Um, Ian's asking, is the toolkit only in English? Um, it is for now. Um, we do have plans to uh, produce a French version, but we will be hosting those on our own um, Onege website um, and we will probably we haven't decided yet if we reproduce the whole dynamic version or if we concentrate on the um, on, on the downloadable um, uh, PDFs but there is a plan for a French version what other language versions would would be useful
I was just, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can, Ian, thanks, yeah. It would be quite useful because I deal quite a lot with um, Spanish, Chinese, mm -hmm. um, um, Spanish, Chinese, Korean. I'm not saying uh, there's about five different languages that we end up dealing with, but it, sometimes some of the people we deal with, they might find it useful to have a sort of toolkit in their own language rather than mm -hmm. trying to have it just in English. We're translating quite a lot of our material from English to all the other languages. And we're dealing with quite a lot of different institutions around the world. Um, it's about We've got 56 at the moment, and these are all educators, but some of them might need a little bit of help on these sort of activities because the, 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 it probably would be useful. If, you know, that's why I said it, be quite useful even if there was a pdf version of different languages as you hinted at rather than mm -hmm. so you might have the english but then if you wish to download a pdf of it in your own language here it is that might be useful mm -hmm. okay well um on that note um i should say that uh, all of the results of uh uh, the Alain for Life project are published as um, open educational resources uh, with a Creative Commons license. Uh, so anybody is free to take these um, and uh, to adapt them, translate them. Um, and, and I agree that uh, just taking the PDFs and uh, and translating them and making them available um, is is perhaps the the, the optimal solution. Um, especially because as many projects, this one has come to uh, the end of its, uh, uh, its funding period. Uh, although, as I said before, LN um, uh, as a network, an informal network is, uh, is, is very solid. Um, we don't actually have the time, uh, apart from the commitment to maintaining the, the website for at least five years. Uh, so if anybody wants to, to take on um, the translation and adaptation, and perhaps as well, um, this is just a call out to, to Richard, um, the, uh, the ALSIG could actually serve as a, uh, as a federating point for us to, um, uh, to keep each other up to date on, on what we've done in terms of translations. Um, and then I can see with the, the, the team behind this, uh, the Alain for Life website, what we can do as well about um, uh, about making those, those uh, translations and adaptations visible. But as we all know, open educational resources take on a life of their own um, once, uh, once they're adopted and uh, adapted by the, by the community. So that is also um, part and parcel of the, the spirit of, uh, uh, of uh, LN and uh, these Erasmus uh, Plus projects in, in general. It's actually a condition of the European Commission uh, we publish everything um, as open educational resources because it's using uh, community funding. Deborah, just um, Irene has her hand up. She may want to come in. Yes. Irene, either in the, the chat or uh, speaking. Irene, did you have your hand up or was it a... You were free to grab the microphone if you want to say something. Oh, your mic's not working. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, if you want to pop it in the chat, then uh, then I'll pick it up and, and reply. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Uh, so in the last five minutes, I just wanted to uh, show you some of the uh, other. What platform do you host these on? This is actually um, uh, a WordPress uh, website, and the Ellen for Life uh, Dynamic Toolkit was um, uh, was developed using uh, a WordPress plugin. Um, get in touch with Helen Booth from uh, University of Dundee uh, for more details on on that. Um, And so, yes, thank you, Lou. Okay, so just to um, wind up, what we also have, um, and this is what we did at the end of the project, um, we 
realized that we had so many useful things that we learned and uh, created during the project that uh, uh, we produced uh, this lessons learned kit uh, in the form of 10 key takeaways. Uh, so um, things like uh, a, a checklist of how to identify, um, of, uh, how to implement active learning in higher education, there's the evaluation report from the MOOC, and I'll show you the MOOC in a moment. Um, we collected some good practice examples in, um, well, that is the dynamic toolkit, so sorry, a circular reference again. Um, we looked at synergies between higher education and the corporate sector, um, because we were focusing on soft skills for employability. Um, we also, um, created again for the corporate sector, a 10 minute micro course, uh, because that was a demand that was coming in from, from companies who were very interested in the dynamic toolkit. Um, but uh, companies being companies, they wanted um, uh, really, really quick and short. So I invite you to take a look at that as well. We can put the, the link to that in the, in the chat. Sorry. I'm, um, let me do that. Multitasking. Okay, what else do we have? We had a specific report um, uh, from Poland, again, from the corporate sector. Um, we had uh, uh, an expert discussion blog from the French event that we ran. Um, and then we collected um, a whole series of uh, videos from our final conference, which was the LN for Life Knowledge Exchange again, hosted by the University of, uh, of Dundee. So you've got um, all those uh, resources uh, there as well that you can uh, delve into uh, to see what, uh, um, uh, what the project produced. And then finally, um, the um, MOOC Active Learning for Soft Skills Development, uh, which is a, a self-paced MOOC, but it is a discussion-based MOOC. So a lot of effort went into the design of this um, to encourage the sharing of um, uh, experiences amongst uh, participants and um, very, very professionally produced uh, by the whole partnership, but carried by our partners at Politecnico di Milano. And this is the uh, Politecnico um, uh, bespoke uh, MOOC platform, which is POC, Polymy Open Knowledge. Um, and so here uh, you have the, like on any MOOC platform, you have the dates. Uh, this is the current iteration. If you ever go to this link and um, can't find it, then just do a search for active learning for soft skills development. As soon as a session finishes, a new one um, opens. Uh, it's completely free. And uh, here we've got, uh, as I said, we've got the, um, the, the videos that were produced by teachers who piloted um, the dynamic toolkit. We've got the play cards, the stimulus for reflection and discussion, um, and also um, helping uh, teachers, learning designers, um, uh, uh, educational advisors, and so on uh, in devising your own um, plan for your own um, sessions and, and courses. So it really is um, uh, a fantastic resource for uh, continuing professional development. And that's the last pitch I will do. Uh, we have one minute left, so I will stop sharing my screen, but I'll just post this link into the chat as well. Sorry, I'm uh, moving my screens around. And back over perhaps to Richard to close for the last minute or 30 seconds of this lunchtime LSIG webinar. And I hope you found it uh, interesting. Thanks, Deborah. It was very interesting. It was good um, seeing somebody else go through it as well. Um, I don't know if there's anybody got any questions at this point. You can type them in the chat or grab the microphone. We're open. I'm going to stop the recording. Um, so thank you for that.